Well, I had a feeling that it was only going to be a matter of time before I made another video like this. Uh, my most recent video was where we talked about the SM2 situation and how Activision shut that down. And recently they just shut down X Labs, which was a pretty similar project, except they had like different games on their clients, those being Ghost, Advanced Warfare, and I think they're working on a BO3 one as well. And if I'm not mistaken, they had the original Modern Warfare 2 on there as well. And recently that got shut down and the people who were behind X Labs were also working on a BO3 client to make that actually playable online and they ended up having to shut that down as well. So now the only project to my knowledge of, you know, projects that keep these old Call of Duties up and running and, you know, up to date with security, the only one that's left to my knowledge is Plutonium. And I mean, let's just be honest, it's only a matter of time before that one's gone as well. It sucks to say that, but you know, it's just the reality that we're living in. So X Labs recently put out a tweet saying today we received a cease and desist letter on behalf of Activision Publishing in relation to the X Lab project. We are complying with this order and shutting down all operations permanently. Thank you for your support over the years. And another one released by one of the developers of X Labs. We have received a cease and desist letter on behalf of Activision Publishing in relation to the X Labs project. Because of that, we are also going to shut down BO3. Thank you all for the support. I don't even know where to start with a situation like this because I feel like I'm just going to be regurgitating a lot of the shit that I said in the other video, but I feel like it all just needs to be said by as many people as possible. And before we get you know too far into this video, there are a lot of people going to bat for Activision saying, oh, they have the legal rights to do this, and you got to understand where they're coming from. And I just want to get this out of the way because I don't want to have to keep harping back to this point. Activision is legally right to take action against these projects. However, they're not in the right. They have the legal right to do so, but if you have any brain cells and you smash those neurons together to come to a conclusion about the situation, you know that what they're doing is wrong for themselves, the community, and for the players. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I don't want to have to keep going back to that point every single time I bring up something in like an argument against that. Because I feel like the majority of the people who like actually care about Call of Duty are all on the same page here and all think of this as just a spiteful move on Activision's part. I just feel like the people who are going up to bat for Activision are just, you know, either Activision burner accounts or they're just accounts with no profile pictures that specialize in crypto and NFTs. But there's just so much wrong with the situation and it's mainly on Activision because all these projects that they are just, you know, smiting down, they're all passion projects trying to keep old games alive. And not just keep them alive, but keep them in an actual safe and secure place to play. Because all these older games, all these older Call of Duty games, from what I understand, ran off of like peer-to-peer -peer connections. They don't have dedicated servers. So a lot of people have just been, you know, stealing people's information on these servers. They're filled with hackers and modders. And there's even mod menus that just boot people offline and pull your IPs. I mean, you're just gambling with all your information if you try to log in and play online in these games nowadays. And these servers, these clients gave an opportunity to play those games in a secure way. I think Activision has officially passed EA as the worst gaming publisher of all time. I mean, that's a seven game series right there and whoever has home court advantage is probably taking that. But I think I got Activision in seven on that one. Like it'd be different if these projects were just completely taking players away from the player base and you know just throwing them on a different game, throwing them on something that's not Call of Duty, and if they were actually taking like a sizable portion of the player base, but they're not. And I mentioned in the previous video how you know Activision, I think they are scared of these developers and they're scared of these clients and they're scared that people, if they find out about them, are just gonna completely you know abandon the newer Call of Duties and go and play these. Which I think would be true if the majority of the player base is new about these clients and these servers, they would ditch the new games because the new games are dog shit compared to the old games. And even the people in Activision know that. But even though I still believe that, I think the reason why they take down these projects all the time is because there's no way that they can make money off of it. It all just boils down to money at the end of the day. And that's just what Activision's about. They don't care about the players. They don't care about the games. They don't care about the community. They care about making money because they're a business. Which at surface level makes sense, but you're also spitting in the face and just completely killing the community that makes your games popular in the first place. Like how are you going to turn a profit if you're constantly just not listening to the community and doing all the wrong decisions possible when dealing with the community and the games that you produce? Like how are you going to turn a profit if all you do is spit in the face of the people who make your games popular in the first place? And also the people who are playing these servers and playing these clients there's a very good chance that they've already purchased the game way back in the day when it came out and are just wanting to relive some of the glory days of Call of Duty because it's nowhere near the franchise it used to be. Like I've played X-Labs, I've played Plutonium, and I've played a lot of the games that they have to offer. 
but I also played them back when they first came out and I also bought them when they first came out. So Activision already got my money for said purchase of the game. They don't need it again. Especially when you look over on Steam and they're charging 60 bucks for BO2, BO1, MW3, MW2. I mean, they're charging 60 bucks for games that are decade old. I mean, some of these games are literally older than some of the people who play Call of Duty nowadays. And you're still charging $60 for them. And you're still charging $60 for them. And not only are you charging $60 for them, but half of the game isn't even playable because of how unsecure the multiplayer is on all these old games. So you can't even really play online in zombies or in multiplayer in any of these old games because you're just going to get your information stolen, your IP pulled, or if you're famous and you make content on the game, you're just going to get booted offline. But I've seen a couple people talk about the situation, you know, Jev and Optimus being the main two. And Optimus said something in his video that I thought was also very, you know, insightful. And he came up with this uh, solution or this plan that could possibly impact Activision, the players, the games, everything really. And it was basically to make this thing called like Call of Duty Classic, where you get the developers of these projects, you know, that being like Plutonium, X Labs, SM2, anything like that. Because these projects, if you haven't played them, they are pretty well done. I mean, they're not like some professional AAA thing or what you would expect from a AAA studio anyways, but they are very serviceable and they definitely get the job done. And these people aren't, you know, just throwing shit together. They're actually taking their time and putting time into the things that they create. And it comes out very good. You take those people from those projects and you throw them onto actual Activision supported clients and you have them recreate these old games with Activision's, you know, security and shit like that and keep those servers up to date and that security up to date and then just sell that as a game because let's be honest if activision could make money off of these projects they would definitely keep them up they wouldn't even think twice about it so if they just bring developers that actually care about their game that being the big part that actually care about their game and are willing to make a good product surrounding those older games they could make so much money off of that you know how many people would buy a bo2 remastered you know how many people would buy a mw3 remastered or even an OG actual good version of Modern Warfare 2. If they released one of those a year, that'd be the top selling game every single year. And it wouldn't even be close. I mentioned that they're shutting down the BO3 client as well, which if you're unaware, uh, BO3 on Steam is literally unplayable online. All the multiplayer lobbies are filled with hackers, modders, and people who will pull any information they can and pull your IP as well. You're literally at a security risk playing that game online. And this BO3 client was going to be a way that you could safely play the game online. It was literally going to be like the servers or clients that are on, you know, X Labs and Plutonium, where it's like community ran servers. So there's like no chance people are actually going to pull your shit. It was going to give away for people who make content on BO3, mainly zombies people, because I mean, that's like the last good zombies game that we've gotten. The custom zombies community and the modders is what's really keeping, you know, zombies alive at this point. But the people who make content on BO3 zombies literally cannot play the game online because there are mod menus that people have that show when said content creator is online or in a game and they can just boot them off instantly. So if you're well known or famous in the zombies community or in the Call of Duty community really in general, there's a 99% chance that if you're going to hop on BO3 right now, you're getting booted off. And this BO3 client was going to be an actual safe and effective way to play the game, but go figure Activision shut that down because it would have been something that would have been good for the Call of Duty community. It's just sad to see how far this company's fallen because you know a couple years ago people were saying oh Call of Duty's dying, oh the player base is dropping, which it was, but where we're at now if I told you in 2012 when you're playing Black Ops 2 that Activision is going to completely kill this franchise and kill the community that made it what it is today, you probably would have laughed in my face because you would have been experiencing the golden age of Call of Duty. But fast forward to 2023, the player bases are dropping more than ever. The games are dog shit, the weapons are dog shit, the maps are even more dog shit. Everything about these new games is dog shit, Activision's dog shit. Anything to do with Call of Duty is just a shell of its former self. And it's just really sad because this franchise had something special going for years and was a well-respected franchise in gaming. And now it's just fallen from grace. It is a complete joke of a company. It's a complete joke of a franchise. And it's just sad that something I've played for like a decade, even more at this point, is just a complete dumpster fire. And it's just sad to see that when something good can happen for this community, Activision will be right there to shut that down immediately. Like Activision taking down these projects, it feels more like a personal attack on people who try to play the old games 
try to enjoy the things that they enjoyed when they were younger. And it's like a message, you know, a threat, a move on people who are trying to make these clients and trying to relive these glory days of Call of Duty. It's like a shot at them to say, hey, if you even try to do anything with their older assets, we're gonna shut that down immediately. Just buy your new games, buy your $20 bundles in the store, buy our battle pass and give us some money because we don't actually care about you guys. We don't care about any of the things that we used to make. We don't care that you actually want to play a good game. We don't care about any of that. We just want your money, which I mean, all businesses think like that for the most part, but it's just really sad to see with a franchise and you know, a game that you grew up playing, you know what I mean? And there was one more thing that I wanted to touch on from Jeb's video, but the more that I sit here and think about how I want to talk about it, uh, the more that I, the more that I realized that I, he put it into perfect words himself. So I'm probably just going to throw that here at the end of the video because I don't want to butcher anything the dude said because I've been watching Jeb for years, the years and years and years. He was the first YouTuber I ever watched. And this is one of the most profound and just thought provoking things I think I've ever heard him say in my life. And I just want to throw that in here because I don't want to like butcher anything he said. I don't want to try and kill the message because I'm just not good at putting it into words as good as he is. I'm probably just going to throw this at the end here, but this is basically about all I got, you know. I'm sure I'll make another video once Plutonium gets shut down because let's be honest, it's only a matter of time before it does. I hope it doesn't for the people who made Plutonium and the people who play it. I hope it doesn't because it's the only thing left that really captures what old Call of Duty used to feel like and what all of us fell in love with when playing Call of Duty. It's the only thing left and once it gets shut down, there'll be nothing that we can use to go back and play these old games in a secure and safe manner. But yeah, you know, I'm just rambling at this point. Yeah, I mentioned in the other video that when talking about Call of Duty, I could ramble on hours and hours and hours because of how much I've played this game, how much I've played the games in this franchise. It means a lot to me, even though I don't play it as much as I used to, mainly because Activision's dog shit and doesn't know how to make an actual good game. But that's just, that's just for a different video. I don't really need to get into that right now. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video, you can press the button to help out the channel, you know, like, subscribe, you know, you see need to be informed, I'm not going to tell you what to do. If you made it to the end of the video, appreciate you as always, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. To put this into perspective for all of you guys that don't give a single shit about these old games, you guys just say we're a bunch of old heads crying about this shit. This is a time capsule into the past to represent how gaming used to be and we're losing it. They are trying to revision the way that everything was ran. We're not gonna forget. They're trying to rewrite the way that we remember things. You're already seeing it to this day where people have terrible and just straight up untrue things that people are saying just because time has passed. They know that time is a weapon and history, context, and recording is dangerous for them. This is why you see people getting rid of books. Never mind, man. Again, I'm not getting into this shit. You guys get it. It's sad shit, man. So I'm gonna play this and enjoy it, you know, as much as I can.